you like. I got you an International Herald Tribune. Do you want anything in a Western language? Which doesn't mean that. What do you got? Financial, Financial Times? Times? Absolutely. <laughs> That's the only paper that tells the truth. Did you get the one now where they've been debating back and forth? Uh, NRC Handelsblatt. Handelsblatt. Okay, that's the one. Well, this evening's uh, program is scheduled as a debate, which puzzled me all the way through. Uh, there are some problems. One problem is that no proposition has been set forth. As I understand debate, people are supposed to advocate something and oppose something. Uh, rather more sensibly, a topic has been proposed for discussion. Uh, the topic is manufacture of consent. It's somewhat unusual for a member of the government to debate with a professor in public. Uh, it hasn't happened in Holland before. I don't think it oft often happens elsewhere. Mr. Bogestein, the floor is yours. Now, we all know that the theory can never be established merely by examples. It can only be established by, some, by showing some internal inherent logic. Professor Chomsky has not done so. Professor Chomsky? He's quite right when he says you can't just pick examples. You have to do them in a rational way. That's why we compared examples. The truth is that things are not as simple as Professor Chomsky maintains. Another of Professor Chomsky's case studies concerns the treatment that Cambodia has received in the Western press. Here he goes badly off the rails. <laughs> we didn't discuss Cambodia. We compared Cambodia with East Timor, two very closely paired examples. And we gave approximately 300 pages of detail covering this uh, in political economy of human rights, including a reference to every article we could discover about Cambodia. Many Western intellectuals do not like to face the facts and balk at the conclusions that any untutored person would draw. Many people are very irritated by the fact that we exposed the extraordinary deceit over Cambodia and paired it with the simultaneous suppression of the U.S.-supported ongoing atrocities in Timor. That, people don't like that. Uh, for one thing, we were challenging the right to lie in defense of the state. For another thing, we were exposing the, actu the apologetics and support for actual ongoing atrocities. That doesn't make you popular. Where did he learn about the atrocities in East Timor or in Central America, if not in the same free press which he so derides? You can find out where I learned about them by looking at my footnotes. I learned about them from human rights reports, from church reports, from refugee studies, and extensively from the Australian press. Uh, there was nothing from the American press because it was silenced. Chairman, this is an attempt at intellectual intimidation. These are the ways of the bully. Professor Chomsky uses the oldest debating trick on record. He erects a man of straw and proceeds to hack away at him. Professor Chomsky calls this the manufacture of consent. I call it the creation of consensus. In Holland, we call it draagvlak, which means foundation. Professor Chomsky thinks it is deceitful, but it is not. In a representative democracy, it means winning people for one's point of view. But I do not think that Professor Chomsky believes in representative democracy. I think he believes in direct democracy. With Rosa Luxemburg, he longs for the creative, spontaneous, self-correcting force of mass action. That is the vision of the anarchist. It is also a boy's dream. Uh, those who believe in democracy and freedom uh, have a serious task ahead of them. What they should be doing, in my view, is dedicating their efforts to helping the despised common people to struggle for their rights and to realize the democratic goals that constantly surface throughout history. Uh, they should be serving not power and privilege, but rather their victims. Freedom and democracy are by now not merely values to be treasured, they are quite possibly the prerequisite to survival. It's a conspiracy theory, pure and simple. It is not borne out by the facts. 
Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have to go yes. to Amsterdam. If you'll excuse me, I'm leaving. <laughs> One thing is sure, their consent has not been manufactured tonight. There is nothing more remote from what I'm discussing or what we have been discussing than a conspiracy theory. If I give an analysis of, say, the economic system and I point out that General Motors tries to maximize profit and market share, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's an institutional analysis. It has nothing to do with conspiracies, and that's precisely the sense in which we're talking about the media. The phrase conspiracy theory is one of those that's constantly brought up, to, and I think its effect simply is to discourage institutional analysis. Okay, let's look at one of the other key examples, which you've looked at too, um, which would appear to go against your mm -hmm. idea, which is the Watergate. Watergate affair. is a perfect example. Where we've discussed it at length in our book, in fact, and Indeed. elsewhere. Indeed. It's a perfect example now, of the way the press was subordinated to power. But this, in fact, this brought down the president. Me, let me give you an, just a minute. Let's take a look. Uh, what happened there, uh, here it's kind of interesting, because you, know, you can't do experiments in history. But here history was kind enough to set one, us, set, set, set one up for us. Uh, the Watergate exposures happened to take place at exactly the same time as another set of exposures, uh, namely the exposures of COINTEL Pro. Oh, sorry, you have to explain it's, that. To it's me. interesting that I have to explain it because it's vastly more significant than Watergate. That already makes my point. Uh, COINTEL Pro was a program of subversion carried out not by a couple of petty crooks, but by the National Political Police, the FBI, under four administrations. It began in the late Eisenhower administration, ran up till. This is the, aimed at the Socialist Workers' Party. No, of the Socialist Workers' Party was one tiny fragment of it. It began. Uh, by the time it got through, I won't run through the whole story, it was aimed at the entire new left, at the woman, women's movement, at the whole black uh, 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 movement. It was extremely broad. Its actions went as far as political assassination. Now, what's the difference between the two? Very clear. In Watergate, Richard Nixon went after half of U.S. private power, namely the Democratic Party, and, and power can defend itself. So therefore, that's a scandal. He didn't do any. Nothing happened. Look, I was on Nixon's enemies list. I didn't even know. Nothing ever happened. None, but, none, uh, but nonetheless, you wouldn't say it was an insignificant event. No, it was a, a president. It was a case power. where half of U.S. power defended itself against a person who had obviously stepped out of line. Uh, that's so. And, and the fact that the press thought that was important shows that they think powerful people ought to be able to defend themselves. Now, whether there was a question of principle involved happens to be easily checked in this case. Uh, one tiny part of the COINTEL Pro program was itself far more significant in terms of principle than all of Watergate. And if you look at the whole program, I mean, it's not even a discussion. But you have to ask me what COINTEL Pro is. You know what Watergate is. There couldn't be a more dramatic example of the subordination of the educated opinion to power here in, the, in England as well as the United States. Now, Robert Kaplan, who writes about foreign policy, I spoke to him recently about his book, uh, Warrior Politics, and I, I put some of your points to him. He said about the distinction between the terrorist states that you call Israel, you know, America, and, and the terrorist states that America calls the Taliban. He said, I wish Noam Chomsky had been with me in Romania in the 70s or the 80s, just one of the seven or eight Warsaw states with just one of the seven or eight prison systems with 700,000 political prisoners. Adult choice of foreign policy is made on distinctions. The argument that Chomsky okay. makes has no distinctions because there's a difference between the quantity and the kind of dictators that America supported and the quantity and the kind of things we went in in communist world for 44 years. Okay, so let's take his example, Romania, right. Ceausescu, hideous regime, yeah. which he forgot to tell you the United States supported, uh, supported right till the end, as did Britain. So the example that he gave is a perfect example, and it's a small example, because we support much more brutal regimes. I gave an example in southeastern Turkey, uh, several million refugees, tens of thousands of people killed, a country devastated, that's rather serious. 
Uh, it's uh, uh, it, nobody accused uh, Milosevic of that in Kosovo. Uh, it, it, East Timor, we, we supported. I forget East Indonesia. Indonesia we, it was one of uh, Suharto was one of the worst killers of the, and torturers of the late 20th century. The United States and Britain supported him throughout. Uh, he's our kind of guy, as the Clinton administration said in 1995. Uh, horrible atrocities. In fact, you know, when he came into office in 1965 with a coup, uh, the CIA compared it to uh, Hitler, Stalin, and Mao. It led to total euphoria in the United States and Britain, massive support when he carried out even worse atrocities, comparable atrocities elsewhere. Uh, the couple of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people killed then, hundreds of thousands later. Full support continued right through the end of his rule. Uh, in fact, continued past his rule in late 1999 when they were rampaging and destroying what was left of East Timor. The U.S. and Britain continued to support him. And I can continue through the world like this. Well, I mean, Ka Kaplan's, it, Kaplan says that, it, that there is a distinction. That everyone's got some blood on their hands, but he says, ah, we have significantly less blood because what we are is blood. a soft imperialist, really? not this, state terrorist. So like when we supported his example, Ceausescu in Romania right to the end, that's good. How about killing several million people in Vietnam? How about killing hundreds of thousands of people in Central America in the 80s, leaving four countries devastated beyond, uh, uh, you know, beyond, uh, maybe beyond recovery. But, but qualify but, but, the U.S. No, from it their doesn't. intervening it in doesn't. any other way? Obs look, nor does it uh, disqualify bin, that, the fact that, that bin Laden is a terrorist or that, say, uh, the Taliban are a terrorist state, that fact doesn't disqualify them from bombing Washington. What disqualifies from doing that is even if even they were Mahatma Gandhi, they shouldn't do it. Uh, Kaplan's can't understand trivialities. The triviality here is that nobody's nobody except the ultra-right-wing jingoists like Kaplan is comparing atrocities by various countries. What honest people are saying, this seems to be incomprehensible, is that we should keep to the elementary moral level of the Gospels. We should pay attention to our own crimes and stop committing them. This would be true even if we were killing one person. Okay, and it's even more true when we're killing millions of people. Let's right. bring it to the bigger picture then, just, just because it, the question he says we all agree with the Gospels. This is, and then the whole he doesn't. Whole, okay. He doesn't. But he, he says, certainly Look, does. Is I he believe in a Hobbesian world. This is what fine. he says. So is he the, saying the we should Hobbesian, overthrow the? It's nasty. If you leave people alone, they'll kill each other. Yeah. And that's why what you need, was he calls, is an organizing hegemon, an overweening right. power, which that is always us. Yeah, which is always us, he says. Right, because right. we, and, and why is it us? Because we have the power, and we have a massively subservient intellectual class, of which he's an illustration, which will support U.S. atrocities no matter how awful they are. But he so says example, this is real politics, that Chomsky's will, off in another land with his gospel, that he says, with, look, not, we, Forget gospel, I'm talking about the most elementary morality. If a person doesn't understand that, they have no right to talk. Okay? If you don't understand that you pay attention to your own crimes, you have no right to talk. He talks about Machiavellian virtue. Sometimes we do a bad thing to protect our democratic and our good institutions and a just society. Yes. Now, how are we how protecting our democratic institutions by supporting mass slaughter in southeastern Turkey in the last few years? Was that supporting our democratic institutions? Was it supporting... Our democratic institutions? Not ours, but... Anybody? Would Kaplan argue that the nation-state has a right to use any means necessary to protect its sovereignty. Oh, then, then he's justifying Milosevic. He's saying Milosevic had, any, had the right to do anything he wanted uh, to repress the Kosovars in Albania. Is that what he's saying? Do we need a, a, a constabulary, a force, a, a central force? In this case, it's Ameri America because it's the superpower to sometimes use unjust means in the service of just causes. What are the just causes? What was the just cause in, for example, slaughtering Kurds in southeastern Turkey? What was the just cause? I what I was the just cause in supporting Suharto? 
uh, when he wiped, when he killed a couple hundred thousand landless peasants in Indonesia, uh, went on to become one of the biggest torturers in the world, and then destroyed, uh, slaughtered a third of the population of East Timor. What was the just cause? What was the just cause when we invaded South Vietnam 40 years ago? This is the 40th anniversary of the public announcement of the U.S. attack on South Vietnam, ending up killing millions of people, leaving the country devastated, they're still dying from chemical warfare. What was the just cause? What was the just cause when we fought a war to a large extent against the Catholic Church in Central America in the 1980s, killing hundreds of thousands of people, every imaginable kind of torture and devastation? What was the just cause? Can I continue? Yeah, we were, the just cause for, for people like Kaplan is we did it. Therefore, it's a just cause. You can read that in the Nazi archives, too. 